In its quest to provide an open forum for discussion of controversial issues, this station allows hosts and their guests to express themselves without any significant censorship. You are advised that any view expressed by the host or their guest are not necessarily the views of the owners or management of Toginet Radio, Togi Entertainment, or the Owners Group, Inc. Motherhood Incorporated proudly presents Military Mom Talk Radio, live on Toginet.com. Co-hosted by Tina Gonzalez and Sandra Back, the owner of Motherhood Incorporated. Military Mom Talk Radio is here with a powerful platform for women to discuss their ideas, issues, and concerns with respect to the military lifestyle. Military Mom Talk Radio encourages you to share your experiences of being a military wife and mother. This show is dedicated to educating your family about the resources that are available in both the public and private sector. And we'll be sharing helpful information from women around the world. We'll cover everything military, from helping a family member cope with post-traumatic stress disorder, to navigating government programs dealing with family issues, to the struggles of deployment, along with being a working mother, both in and out of the home. This is Military Mom Talk Radio, and here are your hosts, Tina Gonzalez and Sandra Back. And Military Mom Talk Radio. This is Sandra Beck, and I am here with Robin Boyd. Hi, Sandra. Hey, Robin. How are you today? Oh, good, good. Gorgeous day in New England. How about you in California? You know, it's a really beautiful day here. I just um, I spent yesterday the entire day trying to drive back from Flagstaff. Unbelievable. You had quite the trip, huh? It was, it was, you know, but a little six-hour trip turned into, like, a (laughs) ten-hour epic uh, battle. Oh, And, uh, yeah, they had, we had a lot of snow um, on Saturday night, and so we couldn't get out of Dodge. And then when we got up the next morning, we got on the freeway, the 40 West, which is the only way to go out of Flagstaff. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a multiple car and commercial vehicle pileup. Oh, gosh. It you know, was, I always just say a little prayer. The kids always used to laugh at me, but I would say, thank goodness we took the extra five minutes before we left because we could have been in that accident had we left a little earlier. And you just have to say that little prayer that you were you were safe and sound, as, as inconvenient it was, but you were safe. I know, but i got to tell you, after five hours sitting on the freeway, <laughs> there was a lot more swearing than praying. That well, was I'll tell, I was worried. I was hoping you had enough gas because I knew you had a little car. Oh, we had the little death egg, the rental car? Yeah, yeah. And it was so funny, Rob, because, you know, when you know, and this is like makes me think of military moves. You know, the more you move in your life, the yeah. less stuff you acquire. Sure. In theory. So when I go to pick up Christy, my co-host on Motherhood Talk Radio, you know, to go to Flagstaff, she'd never really been in the snow or a snowstorm, so I'm really mm-hmm. excited to share this this with her. And um, I pull up in the driveway, and I'm like, oh, my God. God, like, what did you pack or what didn't you pack? And she's like, well, I didn't know. I didn't know. She had, no, this is for four days. Yeah. She had a body pillow. She had a pillow. She had a blanket. And then she had her suitcase, which was, you know, like a, what I would take for like two weeks, like a great big suitcase. <laughs> yeah. Then she had, wait, it's worse. Then she had tote bags. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, she had two tote bags. And then I looked at her and I said, where's your winter coat? I said, you need a hat and gloves. She goes, oh. <laughs> <I hadn't gone. laughs> and, um, but she did. She brought lots of snacks, and um, we had a really good time. And but uh, yeah, coming home was a little bit rough. Yeah, yeah. But the, on the whole, I'm I'm glad you guys got away and had a nice little weekend away. Wonderful. We did. Yeah, because the firemen, um, the firefighters here, do a kids weekend, and. Um, Oh, my four-year-old is here saying he has a firefighter hat and a firefighter badge. Way um, to go. Way That's to awesome. go. Yay. Um, but, yeah, so the the husbands all take the kids out it, camping, and then the wives get, like, four days free. That's what precipitated this whole girls' oh, weekend. Oh, wonderful. Well, boy, we sure do have wonderful firefighters in this country. We, we've we recently had a celebration in our town for our, our team, and um, they're just amazing people right across the board. 
They are. They are. Now, that's for your friend who was under the ice, right? That's correct. We had a gal who's who's an outdoors person. It was uh, a situation. She was snowshoeing, and there was a, an area that normally would have been fine, but apparently beaver had gotten underneath, and the um, the walkway was a little um, unstable, and she fell in in hours in uh, like 20 or 10 degrees outside. Um, she was in the water for hours, and to, it was her family that realized she'd been gone a little too long. Her daughters uh, called 911. The fire team was just amazing. Her family live in Dedham, Mass, which is probably an hour, oh, maybe an hour and a half away from us, and they are firefighters in Dedham. They sent up a team of people when we had the recognition for the firefighters in our town who rescued Kelly. They sent up a team from Dedham, including their selectmen, to honor our firefighters up here because of the remarkable work that they do. Talk about a brotherhood, well, and a sisterhood, but a brotherhood. Unbelievable. Well, and, you know, when I hear stories like this, I think of, you know, all of our service members, you know, that do heroic things every day. And, you know, but more I think about the families who are there that love them and support them, you know, but have to, like in Christy's case, you know, put that fear aside, put that yeah. uh, feeling aside, especially like when her husband goes out or these mountain firefighters in our town right. go out. You know, or our service members, they put their lives on the line sure for does. us. Mm-hmm. You know, but but it's interesting because you always see, you know, and I saw this with um, a friend of mine, military retirement. You know, he retired after 20 years, and we went down on an aircraft carrier, and it was a beautiful event, really top-notch. And But, you know, everything was, you know, we thank you for your service, and not to diminish anything that the service member goes through, but... <laughs> Like, my nose got all a joint because they called his wife up, like, at one point. You know, and they gave her a flower. And they're like, thank you very much. And she oh, went and sat down. And I was yeah. like, 20 years she has moved this man's stuff. She oh. has raised these children, you know, so he yeah. can do what he can do. It's truly That's a joint right. effort. It sure is. It sure is. We are just we're, we are blessed to have them about us, honestly, and that 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 people are willing to to do it, to go, to volu- to uh, take the oath, if you will. Um, just amazing. Well, and that our families are here to support because a lot of these men and women couldn't do what they do right. without the love and support that they have when they come home. That's true. That's very very true. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, hmm. we have a great show today, though. We have Jody oh Bramer. Gosh. Yeah. And um, Jody Bramer has been with us before. And, I was just uh, going to say, we have talked with her before. What a delightful lady she is. It is, you know, and what I love about her is that, you know, she's she's a, a licensed family therapist and, you know, she's she works intimately with, um, you know, soldiers and their family members like Tina and her husband Richard, the show mm-hmm. we had them on. Um, but today she's going to talk about, um, you know, kind of like how do we best support um, our service members when they're on deployment and then how do we also take care of ourselves. Right. You know, because, because- it's really... You know, really, it takes both. Absolutely takes both. And even uh, the brief moment that we talked with my daughter's mother-in-law last week, she was saying how she wished she had sought out the support that could have been there for her because it is difficult to deal with. It's um, difficult to to know how to stay in touch or how to keep yourself going while they're away, how to help them integrate when they come back. And what's so difficult, I think, about um, the military now is this back-and-forth stuff. And I think you and I have chatted about this before, the fact that um, you'll be deployed for a shorter stint and then you come back and then you go over and then you come back. That is just so hard on a family emotionally, uh, just logistically, um, accounting-wise, you know. Um, I, that's, it's just a challenge that I can only imagine is, is so, so difficult to overcome. Well, and a lot of my friends talk about that. You know, when we talk about, you know, uh, topics for the military show and, you know, what's going on, I always, you know, ask them, you know, what are they talking about? What are they struggling with? And, you know, one of my girlfriends said it's like she just 
gets everybody all situated. Like the kids are adjusted. They, sure. She's got her routine down, you know, to get everything she needs to do done with her four kids while her husband's on deployment. Sure. And they just adjusted. And not that she doesn't want him back. Of course oh, she wants gosh, him to come home. Of course. Home. Mm -hmm. But she's like, crap, like I just got it all organized and then he wants to come home and help sure. and it's, it just throws, it, it's like a whole new system has to be created for the family. Right, right. So, so challenging. Uh, it, and that's what Jody is here to help us with. Absolutely. Well, and the other thing that happened, what, what actually spawned the show for today is I was at a class one day, and there was a mother there, a mother of one of our uh, Marines, and uh, the girlfriend of one of the Marines, and they were talking about how, like, frustrated they were that he didn't call in enough and that, you know, they kind of felt bad that when he did call in, they were mad, you know, because they had all oh, these my feelings yeah. of, like, you know, we, we were worried about you, you know, right. things broke, and they tried to tell him everything that had been going on and and um, they were conflicted because they wanted to share with him what was going on over here but then they were frustrated like anyone would be you know yeah. they're nervous yeah. upset you know because we can't be superhuman with everything but we were all talking going like what is what do you do you know do you say you're frustrated do you say you know why didn't you call I mean it's obviously you know it's not easy to call. They're not on a cruise ship. You know, they're over right, in a war. Right, But it's tough on everybody, and I really saw how tough it was and, you know, the confliction that people have. And so it's really great that Jody's here to help us. Absolutely. Figure out, like, what, you know, what do people need? Right, right. In my husband's day, it was he was gone for a year and a half and then came home. So this is a definitely different dynamic, definitely different challenge. It is, it is, and, you know, and it's something that we're having to figure out, you know, um, it just case by case, and, and, you know, we hope that, that, you know, we do the best we can, and, you know, that's really all we can do every day with the situation that we're given. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, but I'm really excited to have Jody back. I think she's going to give us a lot of helpful information. That's my great. Name. Oh. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, that's great. That was Flip on. <laughs> that is great. Well, my yeah. name is Sandra Beck. I'm here with Robin Boyd, and we are the voices behind Military Mom Talk Radio. When we come back from the break, we are going to welcome Jody Bramer. She's the author of a great book called Looking for That Last First Date. Uh, she works heavily with the military and contract with Military One Source, and she's going to help us cope with deployment after the break. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system, keeping the home fires burning? That's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Tina Gonzalez. And we'll be right back after these. Congratulations on being the proud owner of an adorable, soft, cuddly, sweet-smelling, smiling, cooing, hungry, tired, gassy, screaming little bundle of joy. So now what? Where's the owner's manual for this thing? Where are my instructions? Right here. It's Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lippman on toginet.com. Infant care specialist Blythe Lippman has worked with babies for over 20 years and works extensively with new parents providing workshops, in-home visits, tips, and daily phone calls to ease those frazzled nerves. With Baby and Toddler Instructions, you can get the advice you need on how to survive and enjoy your baby's first year. For more information on Blythe and how she can help you, go to babyinstructions.com. From 32 ways to stop a baby from crying to 14 ways to get a baby to eat and so much more, it's Baby and Toddler Instructions with Blythe Lippman on toginet.com. Get ready for the Not-So-Soccer Mom Tuesday afternoons at 1 Eastern, noon Central on Toginet with Jill Hickey. You name it, from politics to pop culture to Jill's search for the perfect bronzer and chicken salad. The Not-So-Soccer Mom will weigh in on it all. The sentence, I have no opinion about that, is one that Jill has never uttered. In the early 90s, Jill finally decided to put her thoughts, opinions, mom advice, love of pop culture, hummus, and Starbucks, working out, cosmetic shopping, and politics into an actual website and thus Not-So-Soccer Mom.com was born. 
Shortly after her fourth child, a boy, Jerome, now she's really got tons of topics to share with you. This is Laugh Out Loud Funny, and we're not kidding. What's a loud Nebraska girl who lived in Little Rock for many years and now is up in the Northeast doing, chronicling her opinions on everything? The wheels aren't off yet, but it's close. It's the Not-So-Soccer Bomb with Jill Hickey. Tuesday afternoons at 1 Eastern, noon Central on toginet.com. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now, let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Tina Gonzalez and Sandra Beck. Hey, Military Moms. This is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with my fantastic co-host, Robin Boyd, who's enjoying a lovely day in, are you in southern New Hampshire? Southern New Hampshire. Absolutely. We're just about done with snow. That is so, <laughs> so great. Excited. We're sitting yeah, here we're, in the... We're huh? short sleeves this, today, so this is awesome. I'm ready for really? spring. Wow. Yeah. yeah, we're sitting here in the dust and the dirt in Southern California with our ever-present sunshine. Well, it's a beautiful state, so enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it while we're here. Yeah. Well, we have a great guest today. We have Jody Bramer, and um, she's a psychotherapist for uh, almost 12 years, and she specializes working with individuals and couples. She's written a great book called Looking for That Last First Date, which deals with dating after divorce. So you'll have to tune into my motherhood talk radio show, which airs uh, Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on TogiNet. But she works heavily with the military and contract with Military One Source, and she has handled so much in her career. Jody, can you give us a little bit of uh, background about yourself personally? Who is Jody Bramer? and we know why you're here today, but can you share that with us? Oh, my my experience with the military has gone way back. My father was a doctor in the Navy during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, I married a Marine, and after 16 years and two children, that didn't work out, but I did go back to school, uh, got my master's, got my credentials and license in marriage and family therapy, and I'm currently and hopefully for life married to my current and last husband, uh, a retired Navy chief, and I work exclusive, well, actually not exclusively, but mostly with military folk, and they are truly my passion. That is so great. I mean, because, you know, I... I meet a lot of professionals, you know, in with respect to Military Mom Talk Radio, and and I, you know, I value a lot of the things that they say, but there's really something special that happens when somebody knows the military environment, they know the family dynamics, they know the situation, and they know how it feels to be part of the military, that sometimes outsiders that don't have that experience, they can understand it, but they can't really feel it and be part of it. That's absolutely true. I was listening to what you and Robin were saying before the break about your experiences with the the mom and the fiancé or girlfriend. And, Robin, I understand you're a Vietnam vet's wife from, from way back when. And Yes. It's very different to be on either side of the coin during deployments or Mm -hmm. um, even just going through the military lifestyle from day one. Definitely challenging, but but there again, there are so many different dynamics in this uh, generation than there were um, in those who were um, over there during Vietnam and Korea. Definitely different. Absolutely. In fact, I think technology can be both a pro and a con. In this day and age, when we have every means available to us for communication, it makes us wonder, makes, makes especially new, new, ex, new people going through the experience of having a loved one deployed, they think it's going to be easy, they're going to be able to keep in touch with them, and Back in back in the day, you know, we had a letter or a box take a month to get to our loved one, and now we expect them to call on a daily basis, and it That's does. It. 
And I've often thought it must be, it is hard on the family because it's this back and forth, but it has to be hard on the military who are over there serving because they go out and do their job and then have to come home and talk about the Little League game or or the raffle or the bake sale that was down at the grocery store. Just really, really challenging on their emotions and their psyche. Very, very difficult. I've spoken to military personnel and and the obligation and I don't know if that's the right word but to keep in touch with the home life when they're in such an incredibly foreign environment doing what they're trained to do it it actually takes away from their concentration and yeah. a lot of times I hear the, my military folks saying we we need to be able to be over there and concentrate on what we're doing and not worry about what's going right. on back home. And if we do have the opportunity to call or to email or to text, it's very difficult for them to hear things that they can't do anything about. Yeah, yeah, I can appreciate that. Well, especially, you know, we talk about, like, you know, because we talk about the difference between the sexes, you know, on both of my shows, and it's like men want to fix things. and. <laughs> You know, tell you what it happens when, so, you know, it's like the wife is like, you know, this happened, this happened, this happened, you know, and you're effectively, you know, telling your husband who loves you, wants to protect and take care of you and your kids, you know, hey, honey, all this stuff is wrong. Have a nice time in Iraq. Yeah. Well, okay, what am I supposed to do about it from 7,000 miles away? Right. That's right. And it's, and the real thing is, is that as women, we communicate. We talk about everything. We talk everything into the, well, sometimes into the ground. Okay, I admit. Um, <laughs> the men, as you said, are problem solvers. They want to make things better. They don't want to know that we're struggling here. So even though we may be, that's where getting our own support is so valuable and presenting a very supportive front to our our military folk who are over there fighting is so critical because we want them to be concentrating on what they do best, what they're trained to do, and not be distracted by um, knowing that the disposal's broken or knowing that they got a bill in the mail that's overdue. They want us. They count on us. And part of us being in the military is to be able to take care of the home fires. Right. Of which there are a lot. It's not well, easy. That's exactly like you just, you know, kind of hit the nail on the head when I was at that retirement and I was watching all the stuff about, you know, this great service guy, you know, he really did a wonderful job serving our country, you know, and then they gave her a flower and a commendation, which was nice. But I was like, wow, you know, she has held everything together for 20 years through multiple moves, you know, to have him come and go. She's had to handle these kids, everything that comes up. You can't do it alone. No, you can't. Uh, one of the things that used to upset me when I was a young Marine wife was I had two young children at home. I was taking care of everything, living on base. And if my husband happened to be home and I happened to take the children somewhere to visit home or to go to anywhere for a night, everyone would come to my husband's aid and invite him over to eat and invite him here because he's home alone. And I was thinking... <sighs> As the wife, as the mom, I'm struggling day to day with so much more, and I used to feel unappreciated. If I could see that, because, you know, does anybody invite you over? <laughs> you know, your husband's gone for however many long months he's gone, and you're holding it together. He's alone for one night. <laughs> yeah, I think mean, <laughs> And I remember you and Tina, Sandra, having a conversation, and I'm not quite sure which guest it was we were having, but it's different in that a divorced person has the same issues, but it's a different dynamic because they're not a single parent. They still, uh, the, the person who has a deployed spouse is still a married parent, and oh. that is so challenging. They're married yet living the single parent life. And yeah. That's very, very challenging because when you're a single parent or when you're a divorced parent, you are allowed to do things that you're not allowed or permitted by society to do, nor would you necessarily want to. But the truth is is that you're doing it all alone and people are expecting you to bear up under this weight. Mm -hmm. And single parents or divorced parents have more opportunities to search out partners. And these people partners, our, our Marines, our military partners, are here, but they're not here. They're not. They're not present. Right. 
It's true. It's true. I look at the difference between, you know, my, my girlfriend down the street, you know, and her husband's on deployment. You know, nobody rushes over, you know, other than me, you know, to go to lend a hand um, with her life and how hard it becomes, you know, the day he walks out the door. You know, and then I look at my situation. It's like I got girlfriends coming out of the woodwork going, what can we do to help you, you know, because you're, you know, you're doing this all alone with your kids. You know, can we pick up your kids from school? Can we do all this? stuff and i know like on on post or on base you know the women do band together and help each other but the way the military is now there's so many of us military moms who are put in residential communities where they don't have that network based support like you see on the tv show army wives they run across the street they pick up each other's kids well like in my neighborhood the few military families that exist here exist in isolation yes Yes, and that that tends to be a real problem nowadays. It used to be that people did live on base much more frequently now here, especially here in California. They get incentives to live off base, and it is very isolating, especially when the husband is deployed. There's a lot more going on with the military families. Um, I, For example, my husband travels Monday through Friday, and we experience the many separations and the many returns on a very, very small, small, inconsequential level compared to deployments. But still, there's the separation, there's the feelings that go along with the Monday morning departure, and the feelings of coming back on Friday and reestablishing yourself into the family. Sandra, you were saying it before, I believe, that just getting back into the swing of things after you've conquered the the initial emotions of you know depression and, and and frustration and sadness and then working into this independence and and becoming this this fruitful productive person only to have the the spouse have it all change again yes it throws everything off kilter it takes a while to adjust and you put that on a several month long deployment status and it can create havoc. Absolutely, and havoc for the kids. And and I think the one thing, you know, before we were about to go to break, the one thing I'd like to say, too, you know, is the difference between, like, being a single parent and being a military spouse whose partner is on deployment. You know, the military wives worry about their husbands or their wives, you know, the military husbands worry about when they're coming back. Are they safe? You know, there's that ever-present cloud that hangs over. Where are they? What are they doing? Are they okay? In a single parent situation we don't have that worry we're like we're so glad you're gone we may even wish you know a lightning bolt or something go in that general direction and that's a completely different mindset Uh, my name is sandra beck i'm the host of military mom talk radio along with robin boyd our guest today is jody bramer we're talking about how the family as a whole can cope with deployment when we come back we'll have lots more information about when a family member leaves Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? That's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Tina Gonzalez. And we'll be right back after these. Renowned and gifted psychic medium, Sylvia Rossi, explores the mysteries of this life, the afterlife, and the unseen world that surrounds us all in the show called Make Contact. With Sylvia Rossi, Wednesdays at 2, 1 p.m. Central here on Toginet. Sylvia Rossi with her special guests and other fellow psychics invite you to call in and make contact with the world beyond and get answers to your questions. Psychic medium Sylvia Rossi has been sharing her gift professionally for the last 17 years. Sylvia has made it her mission to help individuals and families understand their eternal connection to loved ones that have passed on, bringing relief and comfort to countless souls who have been touched by her gift. She's had the privilege of meeting and working with many psychologists who continue to recommend their clients to her when conventional methods have failed. Now it's your turn to make contact with host and psychic medium, Sylvia Rossi, Wednesdays at 2, 1 p.m. Central on toginet.com. Connect with Juliana and connect with what lies beneath. 
Friday afternoons at 4, 3 central on toginet.com. Juliana is a marriage, family, and child therapist who wants people to connect. Connect with what lies beneath, those truths and answers. And through her counseling practice, she has helped others find their personal power and fulfill their dreams. And she wants to do the same for you here on Connect with Juliana. Through intimate discussions, intriguing subject matters, and the expertise of her guests. For more on the show and Juliana, check out her webpage, Connect with Juliana in Media.com. Juliana will cover it all. Nothing is off limits. She wants to know what matters to you. Make the connection. Tune into Toginet to connect with Juliana to find out the facts that could be hidden beneath the surface. Connect with Juliana on Toginet to make a quality connection in your life. Friday afternoons at 4, 3 central on toginet.com. Put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Help us out, put your name at the top of his list. And the Statue of Liberty started shaking her fist. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front. With help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now, let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Tina Gonzalez and Sandra Beck. Courtesy of the red, white, and blue. Hey, Military Moms. This is Sandra Beck, and I am here with Robin Boyd, and we have Jody Bramer joining us. And we are going to open up this segment talking about a phenomenon that's happened to all of us at some point. Maybe not you, Rob, because your husband left for longer deployments, but you just may do this for fun. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about that. Uh, I always called it like the pre-deployment or the pre-travel uh, fight, you know, where you start picking on each other, pick, 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 and then you get into a big fight, and it kind of makes that transition easier. Uh, <laughs> Jody, does that sound familiar? That sounds so familiar, either right before they come, either leave or come back, but let's talk about when they leave. Couples come in and say, he's getting ready to go, he's going to be going away in a week, a month, uh, two months, and all we do is fight, and I don't understand it. You know, this is, this is a time that we should be particularly close, but all we do is fight, and we get on each other's nerves. This is such a typical, normal pattern. Uh, the idea is that it's so much easier to say goodbye to somebody when you're angry at them than it is when you're madly in love and you just don't want them to go. So our natural defenses are that we want to push them away and say, just go, 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 because it's easier just to go than to have them stay and really, or have them go when you really, really miss them. And well, it's less painful. Oh, definitely, definitely. So when, when they go and you're angry with them, it's like, well, good, I'm glad they're gone. I, use my spa- I can use my space and, and I can think about things and do things. It's, it's a natural reaction to trying to ward off the grief. Um, but if couples understand that that's going to happen and they understand what they're doing, they can actually use that to get even closer in a more positive way before they go. If they know, hey, you know, we're fighting with each other because we're really going to miss each other, let's, let's turn this around and instead really value that time together, really take hold of it and make memories. And instead of just doing the honeydew lists and, and having the service member go off his checklist in his mind and start pulling away and start preparing mentally mentally and emotionally for, for leaving, which he has to do, he or she has to do, and we or the people remaining at home have to prepare for what's going to be coming, you still need to make time to maybe some create special memories, go someplace special, do something special, so that when the service member is over, overseas, they can remember fondly about something really intimate or something really personal between him and his wife or her and her husband, that she can pull back and thank God I can't wait to go home to this person. I can't wait to see them again because leaving them left me with such positive, wonderful, warm memories that I can't wait to go home and recreate them. Well, how do you, though, I mean, I get all that, you know, and I can see how, you know, that that would work, you know, with separation. I get that. But, like, for the person left behind, yes, there's that, like, empty ache in your heart. There's that that 
like there's a little bit of fear, there's frustration, there's angry, you know, because it's like anybody who signs on to be a military wife or a wife of anybody who travels for a living, they always in the beginning go, I can handle it, I can take care of this, I can do this. But you don't really know what you're signing on for, and you don't realize all the feelings that come up when your loved one is on, you know, especially the first time. Oh, well, and the difficulty, too, must be that it's not that spouse that signed up. It's the deployed person who was the one who signed the piece of paper. So in a sense, even if they had discussed it prior, that's still a little bit out of that spouse's control because they weren't the ones that were really buying into this plan in the first place. Right, and one of the things that people say all the time is one of the, the angry zone, the, the button that, that so many – people hit with military wives is when they say, you knew what you were getting into. Oh, I was just going to say that you knew what you were, I, if I no, had a dime no, for no. all my girlfriends, <laughs> who, who, who the, either the husbands or the friends, like you knew what you were getting into when you married a service member or you're dating a service member. It's like, no, I am not Kreskin. I didn't know. I love this man or this woman. Mm-hmm. I want to support them in what they do. But how can you know what you don't know? Exactly. exactly. That's a perfect way of saying it. You don't know what you don't know. And for the first time deployment, the person has hopefully been really, really close to their partner, and they, they've established themselves as a team, and suddenly they are torn apart, and they have to function independently. Now, for the military person, they're trained to do that, but for the wife or husband left behind, this is often a first-time experience being separated from their spouse where they do have to go through things alone, and instead of asking or conferring with your partner or getting some advice or opinions or having somebody to come home and talk to about big decisions like jobs or anything like that, you've got to do it completely on your own. And the feeling of being a team goes out the window. Mm. That's where that support system really comes in handy wherever they get it from, whether it be another military group or whether it be church or whether it be family, that support really has to kick in. Well, and the mentoring, too, Jody. don't you think, like, I look at my girlfriends who have done really well because they've had a mentor that's been through deployments, they've been through moves, you know, somebody that says, you know what, it does suck. And How did you mentor? Pardon me? How did you find your mentor? Well, I didn't find mine, but um, but the girlfriends that I've had talked with other women on the base, and they started asking around, you know, who's been here, who's been, and, you know, through just even support groups like um, coming over for coffee and inviting people. I think the worst thing that can happen is when you isolate. Mm-hmm. You know, because then you think you're the only one who ever felt this way. It's like those authors we had on, the the girl who wrote the book the day he left for Iraq. Yeah. Um, she was really the first one that I saw came out. Melissa Seligman is her name. And she wrote a book about just what it feels like to... Um, you know, really what it feels like, not the whole stiff upper lip, you knew what you were signing up for, all this good stuff. Um, you know, she she was the first one really to put this in print and put it down in writing. Plus, isn't this generation so fortunate that we even have virtual resources? You can go to militaryconnection.com or military.com, and you're able to connect with resources. Even to find your book, Jody, to be able to have resources to be able to seek them out. So even if you are in a somewhat remote area and you don't have, say, a National Guard or a Red Cross really nearby, there are resources. And Military OneSource, if I could give them a plug. Absolutely. Um, oh, yeah, sure. On MilitaryOneSource.com, you just spell out everything. And um, their phone number, if anybody wants to write it down, 800-342-9647. I have found that they, again, 800-342-9647. I'm, I'm affiliated with them in that I am one of many, many counselors nationwide that are available. People don't realize that there are so many resources available, everything from parenting to to medical to financial assistance to counseling, um, relocating, finding a good school in the new place that you're going, anything that you need pretty much, and it's free of service, free, free, free services available. Um, this is available at a click of the mouse. Wonderful. MilitaryOneSource.com, you said, Milit- correct? 
Salesforce.com. And anybody needing anything, pretty much, they can talk to a counselor on the phone. They can talk to them by chat. And I'm talking about a counselor to do anything, like where do I go shopping or how do I find a daycare or um, I'm stressed and I need some help. This well, the Military One Source has so much stuff. We've had them on the show before for all that they do for the military families. They do serve all branches of the military, you know, not just our Marines that we tend to focus on um, in this show uh, by virtue of our families and friends. But um, they also have all these different resources and the one thing I love about them is that 1-800 number you can call from anywhere. Jody, 1-800-342-9647. Yes. Um, they have a lot of information. There are a lot of great places. Military Connection is another great one uh, to go on. And um, there are some bloggers out there, some female bloggers. We had Elaine Wilson. We had a couple other uh, bloggers out there. If you are in an area of, I don't think it was Elaine Wilson. Was it Elaine Wilson, our blogger? But we had a couple of them on here. I'll have to look it up. But after we Military get back from Connection the break. actually has a, a there's if you it has a drop down and you can connect right into it's either says spouses or military blogs. So it's right in there. Um, well, and those resource. are just so important because they're women just like us talking about what's going on in their situation. And it's not all the pomp and circumstance stuff. It's the stuff about, like, this is really hard. You know, I'm dealing with this with my kids. I'm mad about this. I don't like this. I'm happy with that. It's very real. And the Internet has allowed us to put these blogs up. Um, You can go get a free blog at WordPress, start writing your own stuff, so you have an online diary, somebody to talk to, especially for those of you that are isolated or maybe in parts of the world where you can't get this information. Yep. And most importantly, I think it validates those feelings because here we are back here feeling guilty for thinking what we're thinking. (laughs) Right, and everybody's thinking the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And everything you're thinking, at the risk of sounding like a psychotherapist, everything you're thinking is normal. (laughs) (laughs) But we don't know it's normal until we find out. (laughs) It is. It's it's every feeling, even if they're conflicting feelings, happiness, sadness, anxiety, relief, all of these things that you feel, they go together. And they're normal. They go together. And I think, you know, if we can take anything away from this segment is do not isolate. You know, talk to your friends, talk to a therapist, get on the Internet, start connecting. There's a lot of military chat rooms um, that you can get in and talk to other people and share um, what's going on with you, even if you want to share it on an anonymous level. I think that's a big help, um, you know, for our military families, especially those that are stationed overseas or that are in remote communities that make it difficult to connect with other military family members. I think that's a great idea. I hope people are writing this stuff down. Oh, we also will have it on the blog. Don't you worry. We'll have it oh, on yeah. our website. Oh, yeah. You can check us out at <laughs> iTunes. You can download us there. If you type in Military Mom Talk Radio, you can go to our website, which is what militarymomtalkradio.com. You can pick up the podcast there. The podcasts are also available on Toginet, T-O-G-I-N-E-T. You can look at our past uh, shows. We've covered everything from PTSD to relocation to coping with deployment. My name is Sandra Beck. I'm the host of Military Mom Talk Radio along with Robin Boyd. Our guest today is Jody Bramer. We will see you back after the break to talk about what family members can do to support their service members while on deployment. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? That's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Tina Gonzalez. And we'll be right back after these. I am not the woman I used to be. I'm free with Minister Diane Jones. 
Monday nights at 10, 9 central on Toginet. This is your chance, ladies, to hear stories of hope and healing from someone who's been there. Someone who has fought back from the horrors of incest. Minister Diane's innocence was stolen from her in the land of alcoholism and mental illness, which led to her being emotionally, physically, and sexually abused by her parents. Yet in spite of this trauma, she has gone on to become a successful wife, mother, registered nurse, and minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not the woman I used to be. I'm free is a straight-up show to enlighten you and to lighten your load. Do not let the weight of this world or the things that have happened to you control your life. For more on the show and Diane and her book, The Story of Me, email her directly from her show page here on Toginet. Then, join us for I'm Not the Woman I Used to Be. I'm free with Minister Diane Jones. Monday nights at 10, 9 central on toginet.com. Hey moms, get ready for Living the Dream Mom with Nina Fry. Thursday mornings at 10, 9 a.m. Central on Toginet.com. Living the Dream Mom is about the true realities of motherhood, the beauty and the rewards of watching your children grow. All these moms have something in common. They put their kids first. It's not about the kids all the time and the diapers and the bottles and the breastfeeding. It's about showcasing the mother in motherhood, real moms in the real world. You get it? Now that's what the show is about. So every week, let's get together and we'll share these great stories with you guys. And I hope by the end of the show, you'll be saying, you know what? That is my life. Nina gets it. And I can't hardly wait to see what she brings me next week. Don't miss the next Living the Dream Mom. It's Real Moms in the Real World. Thursday mornings at 10, 9 a.m. Central. Living the Dream Mom with Nina Fry on toginet.com. But there ain't no doubt. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front. With help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now, let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Tina Gonzalez and Sandra Beck. Hey, Military Moms. This is Sandra Beck, and I am the host of Military Mom Talk Radio along with Robin Boyd, and we have uh, the fantastic psychotherapist uh, Jody Bramer talking with us today about coping with deployment. Uh, Before we went to break, one of the things we were talking about is staying connected, especially if you're in a community or a country that's isolated from other military families and you don't have that, you know, run across the street for a cup of coffee uh, ability to chat with other military families, uh, some great resources that you can find in their blogging communities. Uh, A blog is like an online diary, if you will, where people put up stuff and you can comment, you can talk, and some of them are interactive, some are not. But there's a couple great sites like I would like to recommend to you guys. One is militaryonesource.com. You can go to their blog section. There's uh, Mill Blogging, M-I-L-B-L-O-G-G-I-N-G, has a lot. Military.com has a bunch. They have a whole section. I think that's uh, – military.com is where our guest came, the three bloggers that we had, mm-hmm. um, and militaryspot.com. Those are really great places to start. You can read these stories. You can laugh. You can cry. You can uh, – engage with other people putting their stuff up and if you want to put up your own blog you can go to wordpress.com and sign up for a free one they have great tutorials you can make it private you can make it public you can connect with people i think one of the biggest things that we have uh, to be aware of when our military family member goes on deployment is all the feelings that come up when this happens. And, Jody, do you think blogging or journaling or writing is one way that somebody who might be isolated and not able to get to, you know, either a regular treatment center or uh, a therapy office, you know, what can they do, especially if they're isolated in another country? I think blogging and getting connected online is the single most effective way, especially in the technology of today, that is the way to stay connected. There are those resources that you talked about, and being able to maybe enter a chat, uh, not just necessarily a lone blog, which might be wonderful, it not only might be, is wonderful for uh, connection, stress reduction, uh, coping skills, but getting into a chat, there's a lot of opportunities to talk with military uh, families, spouses, and connect in that way. So not only are you 
on the Internet, but you're also interacting. Absolutely, because I think, you know, when you talked about in the opening segment, one of the things you said, um, Jody, that was very powerful um, was the ability to just talk about your feelings, you know, and as women we talk and we, you know, analyze everything to death. We go over things front ways and backwards. But just part of that process helps relieve some of that, I don't know if it's frustration or anxiety or whatever it is that's in us, being able to talk to somebody about it, even if it's just somebody in a chat room and you don't even have to be your own name, you could go in under another name and talk about those feelings, but to honor them and recognize that they do exist because our behaviors a lot of times are driven by those feelings. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, I can't stress enough, all of those feelings are normal and you're not alone. You're not alone in feeling them. You're not alone in thinking your thoughts. There's other people, probably hundreds of thousands of people out there feeling the same way you do. And if you feel alone, it's a very sad, isolating feeling. And to know that you aren't alone can, can make everything bright again. Absolutely. Um, especially like the, um, you know, like when you talk about a family member leaving on deployment, what are some of the common things that, you know, like let's say because this, you know, for sake of military mom, let's say we've got a, a, a mother, 25, 28 years old, couple kids, you know, her husband goes away on his first deployment. You know, what are some of the things that are common? You know, not everybody's going to feel every single thing, but what are some common things that happens, you know, to our moms, you know, especially on their first deployment? Oh, gosh. The feelings can range. Um, as, as I said before, they can be completely conflicting and contradictory. You can feel angry and happy. You can feel sad and uh, relieved all at the same time. There's so many things going on. There's stress. There's resentment. There's anger that these people are leaving them alone with all, everything to take care of. Um, this, this is a fairly normal response. Even, even feeling relief or happiness is part of the whole package, being able to explore your own wants and needs, being able to set your own pace and not have to have dinner on the table at a certain time or not have to check in with somebody to, to go visit a friend. It's, um, so have one less person to take care of. I hear that a lot. That's the, one of the biggest guilty, you know, secrets guilt. that I hear. Guilt. Oh, my gosh. So much guilt. Initially, there's the sadness and the sense of loss. And then that's slowly replaced by this getting into your own gear and figuring out who you are and this independence that especially first-timers have never experienced before. They might sign up for a class the first time or they might be doing hobbies that they never, that their, their spouse never was interested in or, or supported. And they find that they can be somebody that they didn't expect themselves to ever even need to be because, again, they didn't sign on for it, contrary to what a lot of people might think. Um, and it can be very rewarding. Um, the one thing that, if we can go back to the supporting our folk overseas, one of the things that you learn to be when you are a one of the stay-at-home people, and I heard this from one of my clients, and it just it was just so true, is the, the need to stay flexible. Uh, if a service member says they're going to be in port on this day or they're going to be able to call home on this day or to expect something on this day, we can see by even the, the trials and tribulations of everything that's gone on with Japan and, and Libya and everything that's going on that things can change so quickly and the people back home cannot depend on schedules. And my client said it so well. She said that the marine credo is semper fidelis, which is always faithful. And the marine wife credo needs to be semper gumby, which is always flexible. And I thought that was so clever that, yes, semper gumby. <laughs> Well, it's true. I mean, it's like when I think of the flexibility required, you know, because, you know, it's like I think of my one girlfriend whose husband got her orders and, you know, it was three months later when they finally actually moved and then it was six months later when their stuff showed up. I mean, all of this stuff, you know, the change of orders, move here, go here, do this, requires a lot of flexibility. And I love that Semper Gumby, always flexible, um, you know, because you have to be. You have to be. If you hold somebody to something in the military, the only outcome is disappointment. For everybody. 
for everybody. Well, and I think, you know, and Jody, correct me if I'm wrong, this brings me up to another thing that I've heard my girlfriend say a lot over the years is, you know, when these deployments happen, um, you know, a lot of times one, and it could be another military mom that says it, it could be a family member, it could be just about anybody, but they say, well, but you've already been through this. You know, it's like you might be on your third or fourth or your second deployment as if, that somehow waves a magic wand. You know, it's like your kids are devel- different developmental ages. You're you're different, and every deployment is different. Don't you think so? Oh, absolutely. I have my young Marines that the wives are saying, we're going on our second deployment, but the first one was to Iraq, and this one's to Afghanistan, and it's so different. And even even my military men are saying, they're completely different places. They're completely different experiences. Uh, if they go on a mew, which is going on a ship and having an experience where they're on a ship, they get three square meals a day. They get a rack to sleep in. And in Afghanistan, they're often in the dirt with no protection and maybe a two-hour period to rest your eyes. I mean, these are very different experiences for both the military members and the family members because the risk factor can also be extraordinarily different in one place versus another. Absolutely. I mean, the risk factor. But, you know, the other thing we haven't touched on, and I know we only have a couple minutes, the three minutes left in this show, um, but one of the things that the military moms have always shared with me is that they are different after each deployment. Some of them have gone back to school. Some of them have made changes in their lives because they had time to focus on themselves while their partner was away. But they're different. Sandra, that would be a topic for an entirely new show. (laughs) It's true. When people come back, they're meeting new people for exactly those same reasons. The the wife has had a chance to become somebody she may not have expected to or explored areas that she may not have ever done, and the husband has been through some things that the wife may never be able to understand, and they're they're coming back together as different people, and um, that's a whole that's a whole other topic. We'll be having you back, Jody. I can guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, because so many of these things, you know, when you talk, and Jody, what I love about you and what I love about having you on the show is, you know, you speak to us from the expert point of view because you are a licensed professional, you are an educated professional, but you're also the product of a military family. You understand you were married in, in the military environment, so you get that too. But more importantly, you relay back to us what other people are saying, because when you look at the difference between, you know, the deployments, you know, that Robin went through in, what, 67, 68, Robin, or 70? Mm, 70, yeah. yeah. You know, different war, different time, different, you know, whole different situation. You know, now our military wives, you know, some of them are full-time employees, some are part-time employees. Tina, our co-host, you know, got her master's degree. You know, these. this is not your... <laughs> this is not your standard army wife anymore or your standard right. navy wife. Right. Um, so you add all these additional pressures to come in. You've got shorter deployments and, you know, the whole family as a dynamic shifts and changes. And we don't have any precedent for a lot of this stuff, especially precedent for stay at home dads or dads who are working and their wives are deployed. I mean, this is a whole different environment. And Jody, we're going to have to have you come back because all of these issues are valid. They're important. I want people listening today to check us out on iTunes. Uh, Military Mom Talk Radio is available there. Our old shows. We Jody, are do also- you have a website? Uh-huh. I do. www.jodybramer.com. B R D M E R. Better say it again. JodyBramer.com. J O D Y B R E M E R.com. Perfect. Thank you. Great. There's lots of resources out there. Um, Robin and I, I think we both agree, and Jody, the best thing you guys can do when you're facing deployment or getting on deployment is to communicate with each other, communicate with your friends, get on the line, get on the Internet. Don't isolate. When we come back next week, we will have another great show. Take care. Thank